As the host of Wheel of Fortune, Pat Sajak is undeniably one of the most recognizable figures on television. However, there's plenty more to know about him, besides his impressively long on-screen tenure. So, let's take a look at some surprising truths you didn't know about Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak may go down in entertainment industry history as one of the most notable game show hosts that ever held cue cards. But before his days on television, he was actually in the military. In 1968, he enlisted in the Army. According to the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, he was originally trained as a clerk typist, then sent to Vietnam as a finance clerk, and finally was transferred to Saigon. Sajak was then reassigned to Texas. However, the New York Times Magazine noted, after deciding it was not for him, he smooth-talked a captain into changing his orders. That's how Sajak ended up working at the Pentagon, operating slide projectors for military higher-ups. While talking to the New York Times Magazine back in 1988, he explained, It was a very high-clearance job, and I suppose I heard very high-level secrets. While that sounds pretty darn intriguing, Sajak did admit, but it seems to me there was more talk about the then-postal strike than anything else. Sajak may have worked at the Pentagon, but he also had a role while serving that is perhaps even more unexpected when you think about what most people do in uniform. Up until 1972, the future television star worked as a DJ for an armed forces radio station while he was posted in Vietnam. He later went on to get gigs as a radio personality in various U.S. cities, according to TV Guide. While talking to NPR, Sajak confirmed a somewhat strange aspect about one of his earlier radio jobs when he admitted that he speaks no Spanish, even though he was a DJ at a Spanish radio station in Chicago. He told the New York Times Magazine, The DJ played Spanish music, did Spanish commercials, and I would read the news in English. To this day, I do not know why. I would also play records. I don't know what they were. It also turned out that Sajak has never really left his roots in radio behind. While you may not necessarily hear him popping up as a DJ on your local airwaves, according to the Chicago Tribune, the star did go on to buy multiple radio stations in Maryland, where he lives. He apparently saw it as an ideal investment and was surely able to put his familiarity with the medium to good use. When Pat Sajak isn't on set, he's likely with his family. The host was first married to Cheryl Sajak, but that relationship didn't last. Shortly after their split, he met Leslie Brown in 1988 at a sports bar. According to People, Brown was an aspiring actress who once posed for a Playboy pictorial titled Women of Washington, skimpily clad in sheer red lingerie. However, despite her apparent charms, Sajak admitted that when they were introduced, quote, there was no electricity in the air. While it obviously wasn't a case of love at first sight for Sajak and Brown, and there was also the fact that he was 18 years older than her, the two formed a friendship that she explained, quote, wasn't romantic. Instead, they would chat on the phone. She told people he was fun and easy to talk to. Sajak recalled, Often the calls were, well, I have to hang up now, I'm going out on a date. Eventually, things changed between them when she went on a vacation which left Sajak, quote, a little annoyed and feeling borderline jealousy. He also realized that Brown was, quote, the woman I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. They were married on December 31, 1989, and went on to have two children together, a son named Patrick Leonard Michael James Sajak Jr. and a daughter, Maggie Marie Sajak, while the star also has a stepson, Mason. The Washington Post has pointed out that, quote, lots of game show hosts are outspoken conservatives, and that's certainly the case when it comes to Pat Sajak. The famous figure is Republican, which is why he has written for the conservative publication Human Events. If you're into deeply right-leaning views, you can check out his articles, which include Opposed to Obamacare? Then you must be a racist, and Celebrities Unqualified to Give Political Endorsements. Once you know that, it's probably unsurprising to find out that he also financially supports the Young America's Foundation, which is a national conservative group that arranged speeches at schools, according to the New York Times. Beyond that, Sajak has taken his opinions into undeniably controversial realms, such as speaking out against stay-at-home orders due to the coronavirus pandemic. In a now-deleted tweet, he wrote, When a disc jockey or a talk show host or a journalist who is being paid to work from his or her home tells people who can't work, pay bills, or pay their rent or mortgage to stay home and be careful because we're all in this together, it's okay to question the premise. On top of that, Sajak's also gone off about climate change, tweeting in another since deleted message, I now believe global warming alarmists are unpatriotic racists, knowingly misleading for their own ends. Good night.
Wheel of Fortune isn't the only show that was led by Pat Sajak. In 1989, he landed his own talk show, aptly called The Pat Sajak Show. CBS was banking on the game show's success, and according to Vulture's Split Cider, in preparation, reportedly spent over $4 million on a new studio, and Sajak's two-year deal was worth a reported $60,000 per week, with an option for three more years built in. The talk show seemingly started out strong, with Chevy Chase as the first guest. However, the New York Times noted that it, quote, made no attempt to conceal its role model, which was Johnny Carson's popular show. Although, to be fair, Sajak did try to change things up by avoiding a traditional monologue at the top of the show, spending more time on his guests, and distinguishing himself by wearing silly and abstract neckties every night. While the show did earn an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Art Direction for a variety or music program in 1989, with the Times pointing out, if Jay Leno weren't around, Sajak would be a perfect successor to Mr. Carson. However, it turned out that the show couldn't overcome its competitors, like David Letterman, as well as the legendary Arsenio Hall show, which premiered six days before Sajak's show. Unfortunately for Sajak, there just didn't seem to be room for him on the Late night scene, and his show only lasted until 1990. The Pat Sajak Show wasn't the titular host's only failed entertainment industry endeavor. The Chicago Tribune noted that along with being, quote, a washout as a late-night talk show host on CBS in the late 1980s, a weekend gig on Fox News Channel didn't go over any better. On top of that, Pat Sajak was also a TV weatherman in Southern California, quipping to the outlet, where there is no weather. However, those less-than-successful projects didn't stop Sajak from taking on other on-screen opportunities such as turning up as Buffalo Anchorman in 1982's Airplane 2, the sequel. After persevering and establishing himself as a pop culture icon, he also started appearing as himself on shows like Santa Barbara, The Commish, and The Larry Sanders Show. If you watched Rugrats when you were young or have a little one who watches it nowadays, then you also might have heard Sajak's voice, again as himself, on the animated kids show. That's right, I'm TV personality Pat Sajak. Do you have any idea why I should be here at your home for... Four, six, Braintree Lane? While Sajak's other projects may not have been as memorable or as successful as Wheel of Fortune, the star seems happy to have avoided a more demanding gig. He joked in his arguably inappropriate way, if I had to come in and do this every day for 21 years, I'd probably be taking hostages by now. Pat Sajak has obviously been on Wheel of Fortune for a long time. He took over from the show's original host, Chuck Woolery, in 1981. On March 22, 2019, he actually earned a Guinness World Record for the surprisingly long time that he's been with his show business job. The extreme goal-tracking organization addressed the accomplishment, explaining that, after an exciting 35 years, 198 days of seeing contestants take home grand prizes, Sajak officially holds the Guinness World Records title for having having the longest career as a game show host for the same show. A representative from Guinness even made an appearance on the set of the show to present Sajak with a snazzy plaque. At the time, his aim was to keep going and, quote, get another one down the line. Sajak also opened up about his record-setting career, saying, I was very lucky in that I always knew that I wanted to be in broadcasting. My early heroes were people like Arthur Godfrey, Dave Garraway, Steve Allen, and especially Jack Parr. They helped shape what a television personality was paving the way for so many others. While earning a record is certainly exciting, it turns out that Sajak isn't the only member of the Wheel of Fortune team to bring home a plaque. Vanna White also has a Guinness World Record for most frequent clapper, which may be the most random, yet impressive, record of them all. In November 2019, viewers of Wheel of Fortune will know that Vanna White ended up filling in for Sajak, who was 73 years old at the time, when he had to undergo emergency surgery for a blocked intestine, according to People. The show tweeted that following the successful operation, Sajak was, quote, resting comfortably and looking forward to getting back to work. As for who filled in for White, since it was Disney week, the show shared, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy, and Pluto would join in the fun. By December, Sajak was back in the studio. The host later talked to Good Morning America about what he'd been through, saying, You couldn't do anything. I was in a, in a, in a fetal position lying on the bed. So they tried to give you various drugs for the pain, and none of it, none was working. However, he was eventually given something that sounds like it was quite a bit stronger. He said, I couldn't even tell you the name of it, but suddenly I wasn't thinking about the pain. I just had these beautiful pastels and lovely faces coming out of it. Sajak also recalled hearing his wife and daughter talking, saying that, quote, it sounded like they were a mile off, even though they were right next to him. He added, I remember thinking, not in a morbid way, I think this must be death. 
This must be what death is like. When you think about who makes the big bucks in show business, you might assume that it's actors and singers who can easily bring in a fortune. And while that's true, Pat Sajak is doing pretty darn well for himself thanks to Wheel of Fortune. Unsurprisingly, back in 2012, he was included on the list of the richest game show hosts of all time. While Alex Trebek was worth $75 million at the time of his passing, Drew Carey has $165 million, and Steve Harvey has $200 million. As for Sajak, celebrity net worth puts his fortune at $70 million and his salary at $15 million. To earn that kind of money, Sajak works on Wheel of Fortune for just four days a month. The crew shoots six shows each day on Thursdays and Fridays. Sajak, along with Vanna White, turns up for work at 8.30 a.m., while taping starts around noon. They tackle three shows with one audience before taking a lunch break and welcoming in a new audience to tape three more shows. While that may sound like a jam-packed schedule, Sajak told the Chicago Tribune, This has never exactly been heavy lifting. I'd like to make it sound tougher than it is, but to be honest with you, this may be the softest job in all of entertainmentdom. He also revealed that his kids, quote, barely know I have a job because he's around all the time. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite TV show hosts are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.